Hello, this is Renata. Before I begin this video, I want to apologize to the lady who asked me to uh, to do this video. Um, she actually asked me twice. She put in my comment sections on two different occasions asking me to do uh, a video. And I just hadn't gotten around to it. So I really, really, really do apologize. And I hope that... Uh, that this video was worth the wait for you. I hope that I say something that will help you and encourage you. Okay, so again, I do apologize. So let's get with the video, and I'm going to read her um, her uh, comments that she left on, I believe it was two different videos. One of the comments is short, and one is a little more lengthy, but it really gives some insight into her situation. Okay, so I'll read it. It says, how can I go on with my life when I don't have a life anymore? I cannot start anything. Whatever I do, they counter it. They wanted me to stop eating and drinking. They took almost everything I had, and what I had left is in the process of being removed. Or what I still have left is breathing, eating, looking around, etc., and watching them hurting and infecting my friends and family and others. Whatever I do or think they use against me. In my country, Southeast Europe, it is impossible to do anything as completely all systems are corrupted. At the beginning of this horror, I didn't know what was going on, so I tried suicide and momentarily was in the hospital labeled for life. No, uh, now, wherever I go, they speak ugly of me. Steal my things and control my behavior and probably say to the people much more worse about me than I could imagine, as I see people um, are scared when they are looking at me or they despise me. Okay, let me scroll down. Then she says, and needless to say, my soul is noble. Um, I'm all alone with support at the moment rapidly diminishing. Ten years in this and now experiencing worsening of harassment. Um, I'm trying to follow because I have it written in the wrong kind of format here. Um, ten years in this and now experiencing worsening of harassment, uh, psychological and physically. And then she, she goes on to say that she's a senior citizen in her 60s. And she says, I think they want uh, they want me for some time more to stay alive just for their practice or experiments or fun. And then she says that she enjoys the videos and she enjoys my videos and everything. So thank you very much for that compliment. Um, so I will read her second comments that was left, I believe, on a different video. Um, she says, I'm on the other side of the globe in Europe, alone and isolated, cannot do anything as they labeled me. Could I ask you to say something to people who are desperate and blocked? No activism possible. Lost almost everything, just trying to survive. Okay, um, first I want to say that I... I feel really bad that you are going through this, that you are being isolated, that you are being shunned, that you um, seems like you have lost an awful lot. Um, and that's the way this program is designed for the house of cards to totally collapse on the targeted individual. Um, so I really feel bad. I think that Seniors, and I'm almost one myself, um, should be honored. They should be honored. Um, and they definitely should not be tortured as you're being tortured. So I feel really bad about that. But all hope is not lost. Okay? All hope is not lost. And I want you to hear that very clearly, that all hope is not lost. Um, we can change the things that are in our control. And there are a few things in our control, probably more things than, than we even realize. One of the things that happens in this program is that because of all the psychological abuse and the scare tactics and, you know, all the fear-based stuff that they do, um, it makes us think that they're in total 
100% control, but they're not because God is an ultimate control here. Okay, so I just want to kind of go through some of the the points that you made in your, um, I want to call it um, an email, but it wasn't an email, but it was in the comment section. Okay, so I want to go through some of your comments. You said that uh, life is just pretty much made impossible for you. I, I do understand that. Trust me, I do. Um, it feels that way. But as I said, it's not. There's nothing impossible, nothing too hard for God. So I want you to read a scripture, which I should have found the scripture. But basically, the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God gives us the strength to do the things that we need to do and accomplish the things that we need to accomplish. He gives us the strength when we don't even know that he's given us strength. Because there is no way that you and I, being regular, ordinary people, could make it through any of this without God's help. It goes back to that poem, Footprints in the Sand. When we can't carry ourselves, he's carrying us. Okay, and he has carried you this far, and he has not brought you this far to leave you, okay? So just know that, that he is with you. Uh, you also said that you tried committing suicide and was momentarily hospitalized, and now you feel that you're labeled for life. Well, I've been there. I have been there. This program will definitely take you to a very dark place. Now, I, I never tried suicide, but I thought about it at one time before I knew what was happening in my life uh, with this targeting thing. Um, so I can relate to that. This program will take you to some of the darkest places you've ever seen. I thank God that you didn't do it. I thank God that you didn't do it because now that I look back and I've done some research and listened to different videos and things like that, I know that a lot of those suicidal thoughts is programming. And it's also weaponry. They have suicide frequencies. So a lot of these thoughts that, that, uh, that run through our minds are really not even our thoughts. Okay, so that on top of the fact of all the stress that, that this caused, all the hopelessness that this program can cause, all of those factors can make you feel suicidal. But that is something that should never be an option for any TI. We shouldn't leave this earth until the Lord calls us home. We definitely should not let these people force us into taking our own life. I remember reading a book. It was by, oh, what is his name? He was the private investigator. I'm sure you guys will remember his name. But I, I think it was his book. Don't quote me on it. But I remember I was reading all these TI books when I first discovered all of this. And something I read, and I think it was that private investigator, said that the perps celebrate and someone gets promoted when they get someone to go over the edge or commit suicide or do something drastic or kill someone or whatever, okay? That was enough for me to say they will never, ever celebrate m me harming myself. No. So take that card off the table. Suicide is not an option. It's not an option. Harming yourself or harming anyone else is not an option. It's not an option. Okay, so I'm really glad that you didn't do that. Okay, as far as being labeled, you're not alone. Every single targeted individual that I know of will tell you that they are labeled. And the main label that they use is mentally ill. They played the crazy card. They do that. And they do that because who's going to listen to you? Once, once they have you labeled as mentally ill, a mental, a truly mentally ill person does not think rational. They don't make the best decisions. They display erratic behavior and so on and so forth. Okay. You know the signs. So who's going to listen to a person like that? That is part of the smear campaign. That is part of the discrediting campaign. And that happens not only to you, but to all T, well, all the TIs I know. 
I can't say, you know, I can't speak for everyone, but the ones that I know will tell you that they have been labeled that way. But it doesn't matter because you know who you are. It doesn't matter. I've been labeled that way too. I've had people say all crazy around me and all that stuff. It doesn't matter because I know who I am. I know who I am. I know my capabilities. I know I'm an intelligent person. You know you're an intelligent person. It doesn't matter. It hurts, especially at first, but you learn to move past that because you understand this program and you understand that they have to discredit you in order to isolate people from you. They have to do that. That's what they do. That's their MO. So once you understand that, you move past it. You know who you are. The important thing about that mental illness label, in my opinion, is that TIs don't display those characteristics. So they can never prove that mental illness theory right. People cannot look at a person that can function, that's able to pull themselves together, dress themselves properly, comb their hair, clean their bodies, hold a job, go to school, run a household, take care of their children, that it doesn't it doesn't line up with mental illness. Okay, so just make sure that anybody listening to this does not fall into those categories of mental illness. Now, with that being said, if a person does not take care of themselves properly, they absolutely can fall into mental illness behind this program because it's enough to do it. I mean, it's a whole lot coming against a person. So, yes, if you don't take care of yourself, and I'm not talking to you, I'm just saying anybody listening, if we do not take care of ourselves, then absolutely, especially people that's having voices beamed in their head and they're not going to sleep and they're being hit with directed energy and dealing with all sorts of pain and, and, and dealing with the whole discrediting thing and the isolation piece and the unemployment and the um, homelessness. And yes, anybody can succumb to mental illness. So you have to take care of yourself every single day, even when you're feeling good, even when you're feeling at your very best, you still have to take care of yourself. Okay, so do not worry about that label because you know who you are. You carry yourself in a manner that makes it very hard to prove any kind of mental illness. You're an intelligent person, and they know it. These people know it. Okay, don't worry about that label. Please don't. Okay. All right, so I'm reading through this, excuse me. Okay, so you said wherever you go, they speak ugly of you. That is a smear campaign. That's gossip. That's slander. That's blacklisting. That's shunning. That's all of that, okay? all Everything you described, this is part of the program. This is what happens to the average TI. I cannot say for every single TI, but the average TI, so especially the ones who are um, victims of the community-based harassment and the stalking. This is what happens. Now, some people, I have talked to several people who get uh, more of the directed energy. They don't feel that they get, you know, the shunning and the blacklisting and the, the people following them. There are several TIs I've talked to that say they don't get that, but they get the directed energy. Okay, so for those of us who do get all the community-based stuff, we, this comes with it. We're going to get this. This comes with it. The whole smear campaign. They're trying to turn people against you. They're trying to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So you're going to get the smear. You're going to get the gossip. You're going to get the slander, the blacklist, and the shunning, on and on and on. Okay? Again. You have to overcome that. You know what they're doing. You have to you have to keep it moving. It, it, it's going to happen. It's nothing you really can do about it. The only thing I can see is to carry yourself again, as I said with the mental illness, carry yourself in a manner where you are exuding confidence. 
regardless to what people are saying about you, regardless to what you think they think of you, because really we don't know. You know, I mean, we have an inkling that there definitely is a smear campaign going on. You can tell, you know, you can tell about the blacklisting. You can tell about the shiny. You can tell about um, missed opportunities, you know, opportunities that you know you should have been afforded, but you weren't. I deal with all of that, too. But I, I keep going. I keep going because I've decided that I'm not going to let them affect my life in that kind of way like I, there's nothing I can do about it but that doesn't mean you stop living you have to keep going okay you have to keep going okay you say they steal your things they um, control uh, your behavior that's what you said that's behavior modification that's that's one of the main uh, things of this program is to modify that's mind control to modify your behavior. They want to change who you are and make you into who they want you to be. But it's not about them. It's about you. What do you want for yourself? It is not about them. And that's one thing that really upsets me when TIs give them so much merit and so much credit and they, 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 they. Who cares? What do you want? I hear it all the time. They won't let me. I can't. They already talked to the people. They already, okay. And, I mean, you have to keep going. You have to, get, you have to keep going. It's not about what they want for you. It's about what you want for you. Are you going to get to um, some of your desires and find out that you're blacklisted? Yes, probably. Happens to me all the time. I call it the phone call, although it's all about text messaging now, but I call it the phone call because you can tell when the phone call has happened. You can tell. You can tell. People are nice one day, and in the next couple of days, and next time you interact with them, that switch. Yeah, I deal with it. I can guarantee every TI that listens to this video deals with it. But that's all to distract you, to discourage you. Keep going. Keep going. As I say, die trying. Like the record 50 cent, die trying. You've got to keep trying because you're worth it. You deserve it. Okay? Let's see. What else? So that's, that's mind. That's part of the mind control. And you say they control your behavior. And it's really good that you're conscious of that because if you're conscious that this is technology uh, modifying your behavior. This is all the the stuff that you deal with. Um, most of it go, really will go back to fear because of all the tactics they're using and all of that. All that's mind control stuff. It is really good that you realize that this is them modifying your behavior, that, that a lot of the actions that you're doing is not you. That's that's a great first step because now you can counteract that. There are people who will argue you down that it is not them doing this to them. This is their own way of thinking. Okay, well, those people will probably have a little bit of harder time. But you understand that this is the program making me feel this way. Or this is this program making me act this way. So now that you know that, you just have to put the proper tools in place to counteract the mind control, which you can counteract mind control. But because the, these traumas are ongoing, they never seem to stop. These people are relentless. It, it's, it's difficult. But difficult should never mean impossible. It just means it's that much harder. You just have to look for some more tactics. Because for every problem, there is a solution. I truly believe that. There's a solution. So they keep coming, you keep going. You know what I'm saying? You, you have to keep. You have to keep doing what you're doing. They don't stop, you don't stop. That's how I feel. Because I know I'm not bothering them. I don't know these people. So if they don't stop, I'm never going to stop trying. And you should never stop trying. Don't give up your life. Okay. You said they control your behavior. Um, you said that you see people 
that are scared when they look at you or that they despise you. Now, I don't mean to sound harsh, but who cares? You know what I mean? Like, who cares? You do not know these people. And that's what I tell myself. I don't know them. They have the issue, not me. And that's what you have to do. You have to give yourself some positive self-talk that makes sense to you. That's going to help you through that moment when you're in real time dealing with these people perpetrating on you or dealing with these people mean mugging you or giving you these looks like they despise you, they hate you, they're scared of you or whatever. Don't internalize that. It's part of the programming. These people, most of them, I believe, are paid to do this or they're, they're even if they're not, they're buying into some lie they've been told. So why do I care? I tell myself they have the issue with me. I don't have an issue with them. So I'm going to let it be their issue. And I'm going to keep it moving. And that's what you need to do. Let it be their issue. Do not internalize that. If you take on everything that these people are sending your way, it's not going to be good for you. You can't. You can't. Let that be their issue. It is not your job to worry about what they think about you. That's, that's on them. They don't know you. It comes back to your own self-worth. You know you. They don't know you. They know what they're told about you. But that means nothing. That means nothing. You know you're a good person. So let it be their issue. Okay. And another thing about that. You... When you say they look at you as if they're scared or they, you know, despise you or whatever, you don't pose a threat to these people and you know you don't pose a threat to them. So that's the piece that you have. You're not a threat to anyone. If anything, they're a threat to you. I remember when I I did not know anything about targeting, but I knew that I was going through a lot with people that I didn't know being followed. I honestly, I thought that it was a mistaken identity and that these were a bunch of undercover police following me. I, I just didn't know. So I would go down to the police department to internal affairs in Oakland, California, to complain about all this uh, police harassment and these police always behind me or somewhere around me. And when I would fill out the complaint form, I would always write on the top, I am not a criminal. I am not a criminal. I would just write it over and over and over on the form because they made me feel like I was a criminal because they were always following me. And I would go in the store and I'd get followed by security guards. And and that's how they I allowed them to make me feel like something that I was not. And that bothered me because of my um, my morals and my values. And I'm thinking like, I would never do anything like that. I would never, you know. So it bothered me because I was buying into the subliminal messaging that they were giving me. So I would write, I, have, I still have those forms around here too. And I would write on the top, I am not a criminal. I do not steal. And the reason why I would put I do not steal is because it, I would get followed so much in the grocery stores by the security guards. And until I realized, once I discovered the whole targeting thing and started to do my research, this is all programming. This is subliminal messaging. No one said to me, you're a criminal. No one said to me, you steal. I've never been arrested for a crime. I've never been arrested for stealing. That was me believing the subliminals they were sending my way. But once I started to work on myself, not to say anything is wrong with the TI, but I had to work on myself in the confidence department. And now I don't care what they think. I don't care what they say. I don't care because I know who I am. And that's the place that we have to get to. Because they're trying to bring us down. They're trying to bring down our self-worth, our self-esteem, our value system, our morals, our ethics, our religious beliefs, everything. Behavior modification. They want to change it. They want to make us these bitter, evil people, mentally ill people. We were just talking about mental illness. 
They want us to self-isolate. I don't care about what they want. I don't care about what they think. Not anymore. Because I've been there and I've done that. Now I'm doing the work to take care of me. And that's what you have to do. You have to do the work. It takes a lot of work, actually. Like I said, because these traumas are constantly coming. So it takes a lot of work to get where we need to be. But the Lord will get us there. He definitely will. I'm a witness. And I still have a long way to go. But I'm getting there. Okay. So if they're scared, you know you don't pose a threat. So that's 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 on them. That's on them. Don't 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 take all that on yourself. That's on them. Um and you said that you're a noble soul, you're a noble person. I believe that stay that way. You said that you're you're all alone. Now this this confused me a little bit. You said I'm all alone with some with support at the moment rapidly diminishing. Okay, so my question to you, and this is very important. Are you all alone? Because you said two contradictory uh, contradictory things here. You said I'm all alone with support at the moment rapidly diminishing. So are you all alone or do you have a little bit of support? That's important. I want you to think about that because there are so many TIs that will say, I have nobody in this world. And then the more you talk to them, the more they'll talk about Aunt Sally who lives down the road or Uncle Junebug who calls every now and then. Okay, so I'm telling you, there are some TIs that literally have no one. Literally. I know quite a few of them. They literally have no one. I know some that passed away that had no one. Didn't even get a funeral. Had no one. So there is a difference between I have a few people, but my circle is diminishing like you said, or I have no one, okay? And that's important because if you have one person, if you have a little grandchild that lives with you or stops by every now and then, if you have a daughter that lives three hours away, but you talk to her on the phone every now and then, they may not believe you being targeted, but you still have them, then you have someone. And what I want you to do if you have someone, is thank God for that one person, for that one. Because I am telling you the truth. There are TIs that literally have no one. So we always start where we are, okay? If we have one person, we start with that one person. And we thank God for that one person. And we try to stay in touch with that one person. And if that one person doesn't buy into this whole targeting thing, doesn't believe you, then maybe you might want to consider dropping the conversation with that one person so that you can stay in commune with that person and talk about the targeting somewhere else, okay, with people who understand it, with targets, with other targets, okay, who understand it. Even if you have to go into uh, a video and just type there, okay, because some people would say, well, I don't, I'm not in touch with other targets, okay. We got to make this work, okay? We can, we can make all the excuses in the world, but we got to make this work because we, we're not working with a whole lot, okay? So we have to make this work. So even if you don't have other TIs, go on the YouTube videos and talk there, okay? Go into some of these chat rooms, talk there. Go on some of the calls, talk there, whatever. Make it work. We don't have a lot we're working with, so we're going we gonna to stretch it. We're going to stretch what little bit we have, okay? So, really think about that. If you have one person, thank God, because I'm going to tell you, I've watched my circle close in on me as well. But I'm very, very, very grateful for the ones I still have. I'm very, very, very grateful because I know that there are so many TIs that don't have anyone. Not only for companionship, not only for friendship, but no one to help them financially, 
no one to give them a helping hand when they need it, no shoulders to lean on, no phone conversations, no happy birthdays, no nothing. There are TIs like that. And that is these people's goal for all of us. All of us. And that's why we see our circles closing in. Because that's their plan. So if you if you listen to this, whoever it is, and you have someone in your life, thank God for them. Thank God for them. And if they don't believe the whole TI thing and they think you're crazy and all of that, then you might want to consider. I can't tell anybody what to do, but you might want to consider just backing off for the conversation. Just back off. I've had to do it myself. Just back off and just talk about it with other people. Find a different outlet. Okay, find a different, there are many outlets for this TI conversation. Find a different outlet so that you can stay connected because I believe in family. I believe in family. I believe in friends. I don't, I'm, I'm the type, I don't need a bunch, but, <laughs> but some people do and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, I don't, I don't, I just don't need all of that, but I believe in it. I do. Because I understand that we need one another. Human beings, we are social beings. We need one another. We feed off each other's energy, positive and negative. So hopefully we're surrounding ourselves with positive energy. But we need one another. And that's why they want to isolate us. Because your spirit will die. Your spirit will die if you're not around other people and that's what the isolation piece is about which we're going to come back to that okay so stay connected that 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 was the first thing when i read that when you said that you don't have anybody but people are leaving so if if people are leaving that means somebody's still there if they're leaving ing somebody's still there okay so whoever's still there if you don't feel that they're in on your targeting and you're sure that they're not in on your targeting, then thank God for that. Okay? Thank God. All right. Said you've been going through this for 10 years. That's a long time. Long, long time. That means you're strong. When I when I hear that a TI has been going through this a long time, that tells me how strong they are because you're still here and you're still going through it. Another thing to thank God for. Okay. And then you talked about how um, your harassment is getting worse, both um, psychologically and physically. I definitely understand that. Um, Psychological part of this really can be combated with um, taking care of yourself mentally. You just have to put the proper tools in place. It To me, it all starts with the mind. The stronger we can get our mind the stronger we're going to be, and the better we're going to get through this. I was saying on my call on Sunday, I'm going to make this quick, because I, I always say my videos aren't going to be long, but once I get to talking, I don't know how to stop. Um, I was saying on my call, I watched something on, I think it was Discovery Channel. I can't think of the name of that show, but I'm starting to watch it, because it has all kind of unusual um, documentaries on it. But this particular guy was somewhere over in Iceland or somewhere, and he has beat the world's Guinness Book of Records or something because he emerges himself in freezing conditions. It's already cold. It's already below zero. But then he puts ice on himself as well. And the doctors are just amazed because they said he should have been dead from hypothermia. And now he teaches other people how to do this. And the doctors are using him for like a scientific study and all of this, trying to figure out how he does this. And they're saying because he's using parts of his mind that the rest of us don't tap into. And these um, whatever he's doing with his mind is also healing his body. And so he doesn't ever have any medical conditions or anything. And he's able to go out in these freezing conditions 
emerge himself in temperatures that would kill the average person in less than a minute because it's so cold. He's naked, he don't have no clothes when he's doing this, and they're just amazed. And um, stories like that intrigued me because I know that our minds are so strong, but because we've been dumbed down, all of us, from birth, from day one, we've been dumbed down. Um, I want to know how to use all of my mind. I really do. Now, I'm not going to do something like that, but that encourages me to, to know that the potential for us to get through anything we need to get through, we can get through it. We can. If we just tap in to that untapped brain of ours. Okay. Let's see. You said they have you labeled. Um, and you said it can ask you to speak to people who are desperate. Um, be desperate enough. Be desperate enough to unlock the doors to the virtual prison that they have you in. That they have try to have me in. That they try to have the next TI and the next TI and the next TI. That they try to have all of us in. They try to put us in a virtual prison. So be desperate enough to come out of that. Because you can. You can. And you said you lost almost everything. You're just trying to survive. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry that that's what's happening to you. Um, and I hope that that I can, you know, have said something to encourage you. Um, it just sounds like you that you're at a standstill in your life, and that's very understandable because this program is fear-based, and fear is very debilitating. But at some point. You have to decide to take your power back because we have given these people our power. We have. And the moment I realized that I did that, that I gave them my power, it made me mad. It did. It, it should make us mad, but not angry to lash out and do anything violent. I'm not saying that, but it should make us angry enough to say, no, I'm not taking this. How dare them? How dare whoever this is behind this? try to dictate my life to me you deserve better everything in this world belongs to you to the next ti to me to all of us and once we realize that we'll go out in this world and we'll do what we need to do to enjoy our lives now granted if you get to stalking and harassment things are definitely made more difficult. I'm not trying to minimize this at all. I'm really not. But I just don't buy into because something is hard that it's impossible. I just don't I just don't buy into that. I just don't. Cuz I you know, I'm I'm thir I'm thoroughly disgusted with these people. I really am. And it just it just irks me. <laughs> it just irks me. Everything that that we have to go through just to do the basic things that we need to do in life. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So it just makes me just know that I just need to fight that, that much harder for the little bit of freedom that we have. Because, I mean, reality, we really don't have much freedom over here in America. And I know, ma'am, you're in Europe. Um, and you says all systems are shut down over there. Well, it's the same here. It's the same here. Um, but we, you know, the things that we do have control over in our life, we need to have control over them. We need to take full control over the things that we do have control over because there are some things. But a lot of TIs think that these people have all the power. They have all the power. I can't do anything. I can't talk to anyone. Nobody, you know what? If people don't want to be bothered with you, then you shouldn't want to be bothered with them. That's how I feel. How you were saying how people have left your life. I experienced that too. But when I look back, 
it's like, okay, those people were there for a reason in my life. Now, the season has come for them to move on, obviously, because they're gone. I wouldn't do that to them. You wouldn't do that to them. I wouldn't turn on them. I wouldn't, you know, but you know what? That's the decision they made. It hurts. It hurts really, really, really bad. It does, especially with family members. It hurts. But you must go on. You must go on. You have to go on trusting God and just knowing that these people, whatever reason they entered your life, that's what it was for. And now you're at a new chapter in your life. It's not a pleasant chapter at all. I'm not saying that, but it is what it is. This is what it is. If we could change it, we would. But there is no magic. There is no magic. If there was, I would have applied it in my life. I definitely would have applied it in my children's life. And my husband's life. But there is no magic. So we have to make do with what we have. And make our life as pleasant and as doable as we possibly can. And that is all we can do. But one thing we should never do is give up. We should never give up. I feel that as a Christian, if I give up, I'm not exercising faith. Now, I don't know, I don't know what your religious beliefs are, but for me, I'm a Christian. I would not, I cannot say I trust God. Um, I have faith. I believe the word that I read in the Bible. I can't, I can't say that. I, I can't say that if I'm not exercising faith and I always say you have to put wings on those prayers which means you have to do something you have to do something I have to do something things just don't magically happen especially in a target's life so we have to constantly go that extra mile but you're worth it you're worth that extra mile I'm worth that extra mile these people will take all your hope they will drain all your energy they will zap you of all dreams, all aspirations, all hope, if you let them. They will do it. They will happily do it. They want you to make their job easier. They want you to isolate. They want you to stay in the house. So they don't have to do too much because you're self-isolating. You're targeting yourself at this point, and I'm not talking about you, ma'am. I'm saying... Me and everybody else who just voluntarily just bows down. So just, I'm just saying. But you know what? The good news is, the good news is that things can change. Some of this can change. And it really has nothing to do with them. It all starts with you. It all starts with me. It all starts with a decision that you're going to live. And you're going to live the best life you possibly can. Take control over everything. Everything that you can possibly control. You can control whether you stay in the house or you don't. They don't control that. You do. Now fear can make you say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going. I'm, I know I need to do this. I know I need to go out here, but I'm not going. Fear can make you do that been there done that some days I'm still that way but I will get up and I'll try it again and that's what we should do okay let's see I have some notes here what else the whole isolation thing um, when you're isolated you you you're lonely it's 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 a lonely life to just be with just yourself. It's very, very, very lonely. But I'm going to tell you something that um, the elders in my family used to say when, when we were younger and we would say, it's boring. I can't go outside. I can't do anything. You know how kids do. And the elders in my family used to say, you need to learn how to enjoy your own self company. And it's true. Your own self company. That means you have to learn how to enjoy yourself, even if people are not around you. You still need to 
know how to entertain yourself, how to have a good time, how to do the things you enjoy. As they said, enjoy your own self company because people are not always going to be around you. And let me tell you, I lived in a house with 10 other people. I was the 11th person and I was so lonely. I was always crying, always sad, always miserable. That's because people can only make you happy to a certain extent. You know, like your children make you happy. You know, your family members make you happy. That can take you so far. But if that happiness is not down there inside of you, if that joy is not inside of you, you can be like I was with all those people in the house, many of them right around my age group. But I, I was not happy. I had to deal with some inner stuff. That, well, that was for me. I'm not speaking for anybody else. I had to deal with some inner stuff before I got to that place of joy and contentment within myself. So that's what we need to, to do is to, to know that other people can't necessarily make us happy, especially if they're phony people and if they're targeting you, I'd rather not. Me personally, I'd rather not just to say I'm in the company of people. No, no thank you. Because if the people are targeting you or they're they're phony or they're just information gatherers or messy people or what have you, no, no thank you. I'd rather be alone because at this point in the game where a TI is, these people can really do some serious harm. They really can. And it goes beyond the smear campaign. They can set you up. They can do drug you. They can do all kinds of stuff. And, and TIs will tell you that some of this stuff has happened to people. I mean, I'm not saying that everybody's like that. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you, a lot of people are sent to a TI. A lot of people turn on the TIs. So where it is good to be around people, if they're genuinely good people, because there are TIs I have talked to that have some really good people in their lives. They have church members who are not targeting them. They have family members who are not targeting them. One lady has friends all the way back uh, from her high school. And now she's an adult and those people are good people. She says she hangs out with them. Uh, she does not talk about targeting with them at all. They are not TIs. They are friends from high school. She says she simply has never brought up the subject and she thoroughly enjoys being with her friends. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. I wish that for every TI. That's a beautiful thing. But that's not everybody's reality. That's not my reality. I'm glad that's her reality. I'm glad other TIs have those similar situations. If you have that, I am telling you, thank God every single day that you have people who have not turned on you. Thank them. Because it's something to be thankful for. Really, it is. So, ma'am, if the people are um, turning from you, they're backing away from you, I know it's lonely. I know it's hard. I know it's hurtful, but you have to keep going. You have to keep going. There are um, situations that you can put yourself in where you're still around people. They may not be personal friends. You may not hold long conversations, but as I said earlier, humans need human interaction. You just do. So one of the things that I used to do is, I haven't done it in a long time, but I used to take my dog to the dog park and I would work on my, um, my show for the day. I would get up early on a Sunday and I would take him out there and let him run around and I'd be writing my show, whatever I was going to talk about that day. And once I finished doing that, I'd sit around and talk to some of the dog owners when they would come in with their dogs and I would just hold small talk until I realized <laughs> one day then nobody was coming to the park anymore. So <laughs> I don't know if that was somebody 
standing way back there saying don't go over there i don't know what it was but week after week after week after week i noticed well wait a minute nobody's coming to the park anymore but you know what they do stupid stuff like that so i wouldn't put it past them i don't know but i definitely did notice all of a sudden it was just me and my little doggy at the park but that was okay you know it, it is what it is i mean we have to accept these things we cannot break down at everything that these people do or we would just be a mess like you just can't and you can't take everything personal and you can't you know just feel like oh this is the end of the world because it's not it's not the end of the world it just is what it is you know so get out in in in, in environments where there are people go to uh, i don't know what you enjoy but things like um farmer's market go and you buy yourself a little fruit or just walk around a lot of times there are people playing instruments out there or doing some kind of street art or selling something just go and and walk around and look you know look amongst the the different tables and things there um they have free samples have some free samples if you have flea markets in your area um malls go to those type of things uh, coffee shops those are very social places and even if you're not socializing just sit there amongst the people at least you're amongst the people you know um if you buy yourself a, cu a cup of coffee be really nice to the cashier good morning how are you you know just say some pleasantries life is not the way it used to be it's a new normal it's a new normal but you have to make it work for you. Isolation is not good. It's going to breed depression if it has not already. It's not good. I, I, I did that. I actually did. I did. I used to not go out very much at all. I had to go to work and pick up my children and that was it. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because it was, it was so many triggers out there. Every time I walked out the door, I was, I was triggered. You know, I was really triggered bad. And so I just couldn't do it. I couldn't, I, I got to the point where I couldn't go in stores. I couldn't, you know, especially Walmart. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I thought they were going to kill me in there. Safeway, same thing. And I still deal with the targeting to this day, all these years later, at those stores and any other store I go to. So that's another thing I would suggest. Work on triggers. Uh, I, I will do a video on triggers one day, hopefully soon. Um, but work on triggers. Because there's a lot of things in the environment that will trigger the target. And it will just make you not want to go out. But you have to go out. You do. Um, let's see. I have courage written down here. It takes courage. It takes courage, yes, that's really important. It really takes courage um, just to get through everything we get through. You have got to be courageous. Um, let's see. All right, some things you can do, some other things you can do, because I've already told you a few. Um, you really have to be committed to take care of yourself mentally and physically. I think I said that already. Um, exercise, try to eat right. Um, I do meditation, certain types of meditation. Not all meditations are good. Definitely not. Um, but some are. So um, you might want to look into that. And there are other things that people do to take care of themselves. But do your research on that. Uh, speaking of research, do your research. And make sure you understand this program thoroughly. Really. Make sure you understand it thoroughly. Make sure you understand what that whole isolation thing is about. Because once you realize that no one, well, I'll just speak for myself. Once I realized that no one was telling me to stay in the house, I, I voluntarily stayed in the house because they had me so fear-ridden. So once you really understand that that isolation is taking your freedoms away from you, is them dictating your life to you, is them sending you subliminal saying, 
Don't come out of this house because if you come out of this house, we're going to flash you with red and black and we're going to do this and that to you. And however, they target you. They, they send you that message and then you voluntarily give up your freedom. That's what I realized with me. I voluntarily, nobody said, you can't come out. Nobody put me on house arrest. I voluntarily gave up my freedom. So because your friends decided, well, we don't want to hang out with her anymore. We won't invite her to coffee anymore. So you said, well, since they don't want to deal with me, then I'll just stay in the house. Well, you're punishing yourself because there's a whole world out there, a whole world. Let me tell you, uh, what was that, two weekends ago, I got on YouTube and I pulled up um, safaris. So I looked at these jungles with all these safari animals and things. And then I pulled up um, people doing hikes. So people were doing hikes up the Appalachian Mountains and over in New Zealand and over in these other countries. And that was beautiful for me. That was beautiful for me because, number one, we don't see this kind of stuff, you know, just in our own. We have a, a habit of staying in our own little comfort zones and our own neighborhoods and not really getting out too much. So that allowed me to see things through other people's eyes and to see what other people actually do and to see scenery. I love nature. So to see nature in different parts of the world that I may never visit. You know what I'm saying? So we have to know that there's a whole world out there. And speaking of that, nature. Nature. We need nature. Nature has healing effects. Nature will help you clear your mind. And that's why I'm um, putting this um, this picture of this water, of this nature. I put that out there for you so you can see the nature. Okay, so get to some water. If you can get to a beach or you can get to a lake or you can get to a waterfall. Oh, my goodness, I love waterfalls. I put waterfalls up on YouTube all the time. If you can get to some water, get to some water. Water has the most healing soothing head clearing effect ever at least for me and I prefer ocean more than I do a lake because I like my water to move lakes don't move enough for me <laughs> but yeah get to some water um, if you can't get get around some flowers get around some grass get, get around some trees nature would a purse be there absolutely more than likely, they'll be there, but that shouldn't stop you. It shouldn't stop you. Challenge yourself every single day. Challenge yourself to get out and do the things you want to do. That's another thing I was going to suggest. Pull out some pictures. Pull out some pictures of some happier times for you, doing some things you enjoy doing, and make it a goal to get back to some of those things. If you don't want to do those things anymore, think of something that you do want to do. And go for it. Think of something that you want to do that will require you to go out to the store to purchase something. Or will require you to go and talk with someone. That will get you out of the house. Make yourself a goal to get out of the house. And if it's too hard for you, I used to just sit in the window. It was hard for me. I used to just put the dog on my lap and I'll just sit in the window because I was too afraid to go out there because I said if I go out there, the police are going to harass me, the perps are going to harass me, so I would just sit in the window. But then I realized, well, wait a minute. I'm putting myself in a virtual prison. I'm going outside. I'm going outside. Then I would sit on the porch. So just take baby steps. Just go go right outside. Okay? And then the next time, go a little further. Make a rule for yourself. I cannot go backwards. If I went to the porch this time, the next time I have to go to the sidewalk. And if I went to the sidewalk, the next time I have to walk a little bit down the street. And just keep doing that. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. These inanimate 
objects that they trigger us with will not kill you. They won't. Now, they have been known to harm people. I mean, I get assaulted, so they, they have been known to harm people, these perps. They have been known to kill people. So I'm not saying let your guards all the way down. I'm just saying if you really think about how you get targeted, it's mainly with colors, it's mainly with people, it's mainly with different maybe cars or whatever, okay? Most of that stuff is not going to harm you, but if you feel that it is, then don't listen to anything I'm saying. You have to take care of yourself. You have to make sure, you know, that you're safe. Because I know that I know these people's capability. I'm not saying that. I'm saying these inanimate objects that they use to target people is most of it is psychological. And because you're so strong, you can get past it. You are strong. You're really strong because you're still here 10 years later. You're still here. You're very strong. So let them wear the red, let them wear the black, the blue, the purple, the green, whatever. And tell yourself, I really don't care. <laughs> really don't care. You know, because you're strong. And these people are weak. They're weak enough to walk around doing stupid stuff all day. So dismiss the ignorance. I, I usually say, Lord, please help me to ignore all forms of ignorance. Because that's what it is. It's ignorant. It does not mean that we won't get triggered. It doesn't mean that I don't get triggered. I do. I got very triggered uh, not long ago. But that's a whole different story. Um, we we still will get triggered. We still will feel what we feel. But allow yourself to feel it and keep it moving. It still shouldn't stop you. I, I have rules for myself. I'm I'm not stopping. I'm I'm not. <laughs> I mean, until I just can't go anymore. I mean, I don't know what you know. My body. I have issues sometimes. But hey, as long as I can, I will. And that's a decision that each TI should make for themselves. Okay, I have rattled on long enough. I did have more, but I always do that. I rattle on too long. So I'm going to end this. Um, again, I apologize for... Oh, my goodness, I went over an hour. Um, I apologize for taking so long. And um, I really hope that I said something to encourage you to go on. Because they don't deserve... Um, to take your life from you like this, they don't. They don't. They don't. Don't give them that much. Don't give them that power over you. Your friends who left, they weren't friends, or they would not have abandoned you. It doesn't mean get mad at them. It means feel sorry for them. If they gave in to a lie, a smear campaign about you, and they've known you. And they didn't even have the common courtesy to come and ask you, was any of it true? Then you don't, you know, I mean, you have to keep going. You don't voluntarily give up your freedom. No. So I hope something, um, something that was said really, really helped you. I hope that you can uh, begin to take your power back and begin to take your life back. And, uh, and just keep moving forward, knowing that God is with you. He is with you. He somehow, he's in this. I wish I could explain it, um, but I can't. I can't. I just know what I know for my life, that he's in it, and that he is uh, somehow using this horrible experience that I'm going through. I don't make anybody mad, but this is for me. What I'm going through, he's using this as the vehicle, a vehicle to get me where he wants me to be. That's for me. Okay, don't nobody get mad at me, please. He's using this program for me. I'm not saying he's behind this program. I'm saying he's using this bad experience to help me to walk in my purpose. I believe it's all tied in for me. Okay, so don't nobody get mad. I'm speaking about I'm speaking for myself. Um, but anyway, I hope that I said something to help you, and I truly hope that you um, keep us updated and challenge yourself every day and update us and let us know how you're doing. Okay? God bless and stay strong.